am so honored. I am so privileged. Who am I that all these fathers, all of them, you saw all of them. I have a wonderful daddy in the house. I know that most of you, you are here to see the Jesus in him. Porter comes. Ancient worship. So what can I say to you on behalf of myself, my husband, my family, and my ministry? We say thank you, sir, for coming. Ancient worship with jumping, shouting, and clapping. Can you help me welcome my papa? Apostle Michael Orupo. All the way from Abuja. Is that how you are celebrating him? If you do like this, he will not come next year. Papa, you are welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. Somebody give the Lord a shout. But how God, are you ready for Jesus? Shout glory. Shout glory. Praise God. Can we celebrate mama one more time? What a blessing. Glory to Jesus. I'll just give you a charge for 15 minutes. And then we continue with worship. As I charge for 15 minutes, the evangelist Lawrence Oyo will come up. Because we are about to chant into some realms. We are about to chant into some dimensions. Are you ready to ascend in the spirit? If I'm talking to you, shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise Jesus. I want you to understand something quickly tonight. Men don't gather like this unless spirits have a business. You didn't come here just because you are wise. You came here because your steps were ordered. You came here because even your mind was manipulated. There is an agenda that God has in this region and he needed a quorum to bring that agenda to pass. Your voice is needed. That's why you are here. You know, the Holy Ghost could not descend on the day of Pentecost until 120 men gathered. It's not a joke. That number is a quorum. It will take a quorum for a dimension to descend from heaven. And tonight, something is about to happen in the southeastern gate of Nigeria. And so a quorum of priesthood and priest is required. That is why you came. And so I want you to interact with what is happening here with a superior revelation. God has touched your circumstances. God has touched your bodies. God has touched your soul. But it's time for your spirit to transact because the heritage of the land is at stake. And at this time, we want to do business in deep waters so that we can write legislations and laws over the gates of this territory. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Every region in Nigeria is not the same. Different gates represent different possibilities. The southeastern gate holds the power of prosperity for this nation. And if God has brought you to this region, it means there is something in your spirit that must be awoken. If the witness of God as touching the prosperity of the church must be born. This is why you are here. And so I don't want you to take the next 15 minutes for granted. I want to open just three scriptures before we begin to pray so that you will pray with understanding. How many of you are ready to pray tonight? I know we have worshipped, we have sung, but it's time to make some terrific intercessions in the spirit. Revelations chapter 12 verse 7 to 8 
the Bible was speaking about the things that happen on earth. Please hear me. Everything you see happening on earth began in the spirit. The earth is the region of manifestation. But where realities are born from is in the spirit. And he said there was war in heaven. And when there was war in heaven, the impact of the war was not in heaven. It was on earth. The Bible said the dragon rose up against God and his army. He said, but Michael withstood him, fought him, and kicked him out of heaven. And there was no place for him anymore. Then he was cast to the earth. And the Bible said, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. The great deceiver has come. The question is, why did the dragon come to the earth? I will give you one out of many answers. Listen, the devil has lived with God for aeons. He was an angel and he was not just an ordinary angel. If you study the angelic realm, angels have ranks. Ordinary angels are messengers. But there are other angels that are princes. And the devil was a prince in heaven. So he understood God. Now, when they studied God, they knew that God had no weakness. They had been with him for aeon. God is called the Elohim. That means he is all powerful. Anything he says come to pass. Nothing can affect God. But the devil discovered that there was something about God that others did not know. And that thing he found out about God was that God loved man. Because after the devil fell, God started a project. And the project God started was to create another being. And the being God created, he called him man. And so in Genesis 1.26, he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. No angel was created in the image of God. There was no record anywhere in the Bible that an angel was created in the image of God. For the first time, God replicated himself. And so man was actually an offspring of God. When man was to be created, there was no raw material for creating man. God had to breathe out. So man is actually God exhaled and kept in dust. And so the devil knows anything that affects man affects God directly. And so if you cannot hurt God, there is a way to touch God. The way to touch God is to touch man. Because if you touch man, you touch the image of God. And when you touch the image of God, you touch God. He knows that he cannot fight God. He knows that he cannot do anything to God. But the way to touch God is to touch man. And so the devil declared war with man. If man fails, God will be hurt. Because he discovered that man is the object of God's love. And true to what the devil discovered, when man fell, God left everything. The Bible said, that Jesus, the Son of God, came into this world. You may take it for granted if you don't know who God is. God is not created. He is the creator. God has no weakness. He's all powerful. God is not a man. God is a spirit. But in order to save man, God came down from his throne, took up the garment of God, and God entered the womb of a woman and God was there for nine months. God was born as a man to save man. And the Bible said, all of that thing that God did is a revelation of his love. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So when the devil discovered that God loved God, the devil found out one thing. The only way to hurt God is to hurt man. And for time immemorial, the devil has been attempting to hurt man. And so Jesus was speaking in John chapter 10 verse 10. He said, the devil cometh not, but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. 
The question is, what do you have that the devil wants to steal? The devil is not a man. He's a spirit. He doesn't need your car. He doesn't need your money. He doesn't need your house. What do you have that the devil wants to steal from you? I can tell you one. One of the things you have that the devil wants to steal is glory. Because man is the only creature that carries the fullness of God's glory. And so the devil knows that if he comes to you, he can steal something you have that is exclusive to God. This is why when man sinned, the Bible said, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And then you ask yourself, what is glory? Glory is not light. No, glory is deeper than light. Glory is the essence of God. Everything God has that makes him God, God gave it to man. And so when the man was created, there were different manifestations of glory. Number one, man had the wisdom of God. So when God created all the animals, he told the man, go and name them. I will not tell you the name. And the man showed off. He looks at lion. He said, this one is lion. And they checked the register of heaven. God called it lion. He said, this one is eagle. They checked heaven. God called it eagle. He said, this one is snake. They checked heaven. God saw that it was snake. So the wisdom, the intelligence of man was at the frequency of God. But when glory was stolen from man, the Bible said they know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. Suddenly, the man that was as intelligent as God began to walk in darkness. He said, I have said, ye are God's because we are the children of the Most High. He said, but you will fall like one of the princes. So when glory left him, spiritual intelligence left him. Brothers and sisters, you can study in Harvard. You can't have spiritual knowledge. You may study in Oxford University. You may not have spiritual knowledge. You may have master's degree. You may have PhD. You may not walk in spiritual knowledge. So when the devil makes you to walk in darkness, it means you don't have glory. And how does he do that? The way he does it is to put sin in your life. And so that time you went to fornicate and you say nobody saw me. Yes, nobody saw you, but it has made you blind. You cannot read at God's frequency. You cannot see at God's frequency because the way God designed you was to see like God see, was to talk like God talks. But now that you have allowed sin, you can no longer operate at that level. So a man that should function like God begins to function like an animal because glory is God. Glory is God. Glory is God. So we don't know God's agenda for Portacot anymore. Somebody may come and heal your body, but where is the glory? What you lost was the glory. What you lost was what makes you to function at the frequency of God. And so if you come to this meeting tonight, you may think we came to sing songs and be excited. No, that's not why we came. When we came for this meeting tonight, we came to transact glory. We came to do the business of glory. So I'm not living here until my mind begins to function like the mind of God. That is who I am. I'm to operate at the frequency of God. So when you are worshiping, something is happening to you. They say we all with open faces, beholding us in the glass, the glory of the Lord. We are metamorphosed. We are transformed. We are transfigured. So when you leave the ground tonight, they will say, is that not Matthew? No, this is no longer Matthew. This is Matthew walking in glory. They say, is that not Abigail? No, this is not Abigail. This is Abigail walking in glory. And so you enter a knowledge. You go to your shop on Monday. The same business you did for five years that you didn't succeed. Now you will know something that you didn't read in the textbook. And you will do it in a different way and have a different result because glory has been restored. We came to function in the glory. But that's not all. Glory also speaks about immortality. So you hit a realm where even your body can no longer be afflicted by demons. Hope you know Jesus walked on earth for 33 and a half years. He didn't have headache once. He didn't have fever once. How do you think he was doing it? 
you think it's dieting you think it's exercise you think it's rest all of those things are important but that's an economy superior to anything that man can teach you is the glory economy you know why when you enter the glory the bible said jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of the father and he said that same spirit that raised up jesus from the dead dwells in you he quickens your mortal body so there is a glory economy you enter that your eyes cannot fail your body cannot fail your business cannot fail anything you touch glory flows out of it how did you think the man of God stood here and catch one in? Deaf ears were opening. It's the economy of the glory. But hear me, that dimension is not for prophets. That dimension is not for apostles. That dimension is not for evangelists. It's for everyone that believes. He said, these signs shall follow everyone that believes. In my name, they shall cast out devils. When they lay hands on the sick, the sick shall recover. That means my hand is no longer ordinary. There is something on my hand. When I shake you, I emit glory. When I talk to you, I emit glory. Not because I am wise, but because Christ in me is the hope of glory. That is what God is doing. And that is not all. When you enter the economy of glory, anything you touch prospers. See, there is a realm of sowing and reaping. But there's also a realm of multiplication. Jesus showed up. They said there are 5,000 men. And he said, what do you have for them? They said, master, don't go there. Even one year's salary cannot feed them. And we don't have any way to cook the food now. There's a realm where you don't need to cook. What do you have? They said they have five loaves and two fishes. Bring it here. We are talking about glory. And when he carried the bread, he lifted it up, gave thanks, said, take, give them. As they broke it, he multiplied. As they broke it, he multiplied. As they broke it, that is the glory realm. And when Jesus left, he said, the works that I do, he said, you shall do also. And greater works. How then can I be in scarcity? How then can I be in lack? How then can I be in poverty? That means whatever I need to do to prosper is already on my inside. If I need to sow and reap, I will sow. But in case I don't have the opportunity to sow and reap, there is an atmosphere that I carry. And that atmosphere causes the lines to fall for me in pleasant places. When you came here to worship, you came to do glory business. So as you walk out of this meeting, there will be no lack in your life anymore. Because the glory has come. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is God manifested through a man. Christianity is divinity expressed through humanity. God came to restore the glory. And you know what Jesus said? In John 17, 22, he said, the glory that you have given to me, I have given to them. The Bible said in Romans 8, 29, him that he foreknew, the same he called. Him that he called, the same he justified. Him that he justified, the same he glorified. Listen, why do you think people go to Babalawo? Because these dark princes, they know something about glory, but they don't know enough. So you can go to a native doctor, he chants incantation and say, go and sell pure water. And you start selling pure water and you become a millionaire. That means there's a realm beyond hard work. Hard work is important, but there are dimensions superior to it. But for us who are in Christ, we don't need any Babalawo. Because we are sitting in a realm superior to even the spirits that the Babalawo consult. The Bible said Christ was exalted far above principalities and powers. And he said, you and I, we are seated with him in heavenly places. So I'm not just superior to Babalawo, I'm superior to the spirit that he consults. And that is why the Bible said you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, God's own special people. God fought to manifest the glory. So your life is a manifestation of the glory of the Father. This is why we are here tonight. We have an advantage. We are not hopeless. We are not helpless. We are mightily helped of God. Christ in you is the hope of glory. And everyone who carries Christ walks in that glory. See, you can't do the business of God until you first of all know who you are. I'm not an ordinary person. 
I'm a carrier of the glory of God. I'm not an ordinary person. He said, whoever is in Christ Jesus is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The only things allowed in your life are the glory dimensions. And when the glory rests upon you, even your voice is edited. You talk and sing and the nations listen. Your body is edited. You touch people, they are blessed. Your resources are edited. Anything you lay your hands will prosper. This is what God has called us into. Healing is an intervention. The recalling is the glory realm. The glory realm, your body can't be sick. The glory realm, no devil can defeat you. In the glory realm, anything you do prospers. And tonight, there's a call to glory. But you see, the glory has protocols. The first protocol of the glory is to receive Jesus and be sure that you have him. This is not church. Help me, brothers and sisters, understand this. You can be in church and not be in Christ. You can be ordained an apostle and not be in Christ. The difference is not the church you attend. People fight for denomination. I am this, I am that, but Christ is not in them. If you have Christ, you will know. And so the first protocol for the glory is for Christ to dwell on your inside. He said, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Now when you have received Christ, that is when this worship will make sense. Because when we worship God, it's not just about the song. There are more than one trillion angels worshiping without ceasing, day and night. It's not about the keyboard. It's not about the instrument. When we worship God, it's about three things. Number one, we are appreciating Him for what He has done. So we are saying that He is the one who did it. And so we want to praise Him for it. Number two, when we are worshiping God, the glory that is in our spirit is what we are emitting to heaven. If you don't have glory, you can't worship. How do you think the trees worship God? They don't sing in cognitive words. How do you think the ocean worship God? Every creation worship God. Why? Because every creation carries a measure of glory. The sun you are seeing carries a measure of glory. The tree carries a measure of glory. So when we say we are worshiping God, it's the glory that is on our inside that we are releasing to Him. And so anybody who doesn't have Jesus cannot worship. So the first thing that happens is praise and gratitude. The second thing that happens is to release what you have. And the third thing that happens is for you to see Him so that you enter higher levels of glory. We all with open faces, beholding us in the glass, the glory of the Lord, we are changed from glory to glory as by the Spirit of God. It is the higher glory you carry that will give you an advantage in your world. But there are many people who don't have glory because they have not received Christ and because they are not engaging Christ. If we don't do this, we cannot make demand on the good of heaven to find expression in our generation. God is calling for a generation. An army is rising. And that army is not an army of religious people. That army is not an army of users of God who gather only to receive miracles. That army is an army that understands the glory. So that when we live, all of us can show God to our generation. But it begins first of all to be deliberate and sure that you have Jesus. And then to engage him. Even Jesus, when he was on earth, the Bible said as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment began to glister. When you carry glory, as you worship, your propensities increase. Wisdom increase. Power increase. Influence increase. Favor increase. Because it was locked up on your inside. Worship opens it. Prayer opens it. This is what we have come to do. Tonight, I want us to pray for just 10 minutes with understanding but before we pray somebody who is not sure I know when daddy came up earlier they said if you want to give your heart to Christ wave your hand most of you waved your hand you may not even know what you are doing this is not a religious activity we do every time people gather this is a deliberate decision Lord today I will receive you 
and I will not only receive you, but I will submit my life to you so that me too, I will manifest the glory because I was called to manifest the glory. Those of you who answered the altar call before and those of you who didn't, this is an opportunity because I spoke with a woman of God. She said, they, we need to get your names so that we can be praying for you until voices rise in Port Harcourt, until carriers of the glory rise we have not started listen the church of superstars is about to be over where one apostle has to come from Abuja another one has to come from Lagos the church that God is raising is one that you can look at an usher and say there's a crippled man outside the usher will go and say stand up and the cripple will stand up that's the church God is raising it's not a church of few special people it's an army we are migrating from the voice of one to an army to an army and you must partake of that glory you must walk in that glory the church we are talking about now is one that somebody is demonized they say who is there they say it's the gate man go and cast out that demon and the gate man we go the demon has no choice but to obey but it begins when you deliberately receive jesus and so in the next two minutes i want to give somebody an opportunity now if you are not sure that you have received jesus or if you received him earlier today I want you to make your way to the front we need to pray with you we need to gather your details and keep praying until that glory manifest if i had time i would have told you my story there was a time when people were dying in my family like chickens i didn't know about glory i thought this thing was about having a title i thought this thing was about belonging to a church until the holy ghost told me no you must manifest god if you want to manifest god in your generation this is your hour can we all be standing now this is the hour of intercession you have not received jesus this is your opportunity those of you standing in front can you just take three steps backward let's be sure of those we are dealing with god's servant made another call earlier some of you waved your hands and then i'm making another other call now you are here you are not sure about jesus please make your way to the front as fast as you can we have just two minutes wherever you are standing but i caught this is the time for men to rise start coming forward as evangelists leads us in worship river river overflow My world is waiting, waiting for me.
said is the light that shines in darkness number two is sin but when you receive Jesus is the power that breaks in number three is worldliness friendship with the world it darkens your understanding but when you receive Jesus he breaks that spell number four is the devil himself if our gospel be healed Help the lady under the power. Is he to them that are lost, whom the God of this world have blinded their heart. But when you receive Jesus, he gives you authority over the devil. These are four things God will do for everyone who is accepting the Lord here tonight. Ignorance will be removed. The power of sin will be broken. Lost and worthiness will be broken. And the authority of Satan over your soul will be broken. If this is all God has done tonight, He has done more than enough. One more time. Wherever you are standing, if you are not sure, listen. The Bible said today is the day of salvation. This may be the last utter call you will hear in your life. If you are not sure, this is another opportunity. Wherever you are standing, Leave that your friend. Leave that person you came with. We are doing eternal business right now. 
and come and embrace Jesus. There is darkness in my soul. Lord, shine your light upon me. There is love for the world. Lord, break that connection. There is darkness covering from the devil. Break the power of Satan. And sin has made me a slave. Help me, Lord. If that is your cry, in another one minute, wherever you are standing, come now. I have a witness in my spirit that God is telling many people, go to the front. This is your hour of salvation. Come now. Maybe you thought you came to sin. God planned it for your destiny to be rescued tonight. Come now and receive Jesus. He said, if you are not ashamed of me before men, I will not be ashamed of you before my father. You didn't come to sing or hear music. You came to transact with the spirit of Elohim. The immortal God. The all wise God. The answer to the plight of humanity. Keep coming. I see most of you coming. That power holding you back. Whether it's complacency. Whether it's reluctance. Whether it's fear. Whether it's pride. I break it now. Rise up and make that decision. This is your night. We came because of you. God wants to raise many voices. The number is too few. A generation is leaving the sea. God is raising a new generation. You cannot be left out. The generals of the next generation have been numbered. Some of you may be drunk as now, but you are counted. Even Rehab the Harlot was counted. You may be fornicating now, but God knows that you are a voice to your generation. This is why he sent us here. And this is why we are doing what we are doing. We are a bridge between generations.
quarrel. I know this prayer may not be about your personal needs, but trust me, it's more important than your personal needs. Can we declare that the powers shutting the gates of the southeast and preventing the move of God? Let them go down now and let the gates open over the land. And let the heritage of God that is held in the spirit, let it be released from what I call. In the name of Jesus, this is my last prayer. Can we decree that the dark princes in the spirit robbing this land of our heritage, let them fall. Hear me, there are forces, there are princes in the heavenlies that are manipulating young men, leading to the rise of greed that is causing banditry. And there are goddesses in the sea that is tearing young women to join in the path of harlotry and prostitution. So the destiny of the women are being edged away and the destiny of the men are being edged away. White men are dying of greed and taking arms. Women are going into prostitution so that the heritage of the generation can be lost. Can we decree now that the oppression of those dark princes arising in banditry, arising in immorality, that they be shown to the right. Let the words of the glory fall. Let the heritage of the land be realized. Can you pray in the spirit? generation. God has raised new voices. And so we come here tonight as a first fruit and a witness of the next move of God. And we stand on the strength of that ordination. Everyone here that carries an apostolic mandate. Everyone here that carries a prophetic mandate. Everyone here that carries
is an evangelical mandate, a teaching mandate, a pastoral mandate, or mandate for leadership, or economic governance. I speak over you by the Spirit. Let that set the rest upon you now. Let that set the rest upon you now. And every power fighting you from realizing your ordination, I speak against that power by the message of him that sits upon the throne. Let there be a new judgment in your favor. Arise, shine. Arise, shine. Arise, shine. In the name of Jesus. Those of you who are standing in front now, place your hand on your chest. The heavens are open. You can walk in the fullness of God's calling for your life. Say, dear Heavenly Father, I believe in my heart that Jesus is your son. I believe he died for my sins. He was buried. And on the third day, he rose for my justification. I confess with my mouth tonight that Jesus is the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. And I submit the totality of my being to Jesus. Thank you, Father. I have come into the family of God. And from today, I live for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, I have declared. Lord, keep them. Lord, preserve them. Exalt their heart. And cause them to become answers to many generations. Lift your hands toward heaven. One minute we are out of your face. There's an anointing that will come upon you now. That anointing will shift most of you to the next level of your walk with God. Evangelists will chant now. And that move of the spirit will begin. Please be sensitive. Father, everyone ordained tonight for an activation, for an awakening, for a new realm of spiritual operation. By the Spirit, I release that grace. Wherever they are standing, from the front to the back, from the left to the right, men that carry powers of the ages to come to exercise government and governance. In the name of Jesus, carry that grace now. Help them! Yeah. 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 Yeah.